leaving all behind. A sad farewell to home. Trekking west with the sun. Into, into the, the unknown. unknown. My feet are weary. My shoes are worn. Axles broken. Covers torn. Marching to the beat of hymns in my head. Dreaming of cold water and fresh baked bread. Months of freezing nights. My, my mind, mind wandering, wandering the stars. stars. Grieving those we lost. The burden of new scars. A seed of hope just, just a few, few miles, miles away. away. Up the rocky hillside. Fighting, fighting the heat of the day. Now at the overlook. Spirits grew. A majestic mountain roomed valley came into view. With sobs of joy and tears down my face. face. Our journey is over. This is the place. This is a special presentation from Fox 13, celebrating 175 years of pioneer spirit. Sponsored by Lee's Marketplace. It is enough. This is the right place. Drive on. Those iconic words were spoken by Brigham Young on this hallowed ground on this day back in 1847. And it set in motion a new beginning and a firm path for generations of Utah families to live and prosper today. Thank you so much for joining us on this Fox 13 News special report celebrating Utah's pioneer spirit. I'm Dan Evans. And I'm Bob Evans. We are on location at This Is The Place Heritage Park in the Brigham Young Farmhouse. Over the next 30 minutes, Fox 13 News is going to take a deep dive into Utah's pioneer heritage, as well as share untold stories of those who came before us. And we'll show you how that pioneer spirit that helped the first Utahns stay determined to find a new life is alive and well in Utahns today, 175 years later. But before we get there, we need to go back to the beginning. Brigham Young prophesied that the desert would blossom as a rose, but the path for that to happen was not easy. Tens of thousands of pioneers made the difficult trek to the west, and many of their descendants stayed in this area even to this day. Fox 13 News spoke with a few who can draw a line back to the early pioneer settlers, including myself. We sat down to share our thoughts about our pioneer heritage. Joseph Argyle is my fifth great-grandfather. He married a woman who also walked across the plains and they settled in West Bountiful. Now I live in West Bountiful and I pass their home every day and think about them. I'm four generations a member of the Daughters of Utah Pioneers. I help take care of the 47,000 histories people have written. My ancestor is Samuel Rose Parkinson. He came across in a wagon train. Moving in a wagon train was like moving a city and you had to load it up with everything you owned, your clothes, camping equipment, and they traveled very slowly because there were no roads. They had a very difficult time getting here. I'm really very proud of my pioneer heritage, Parley P. Pratt. He's my third great-grandfather. They're one of the first into the Salt Lake Valley. His brother Orson Pratt was the first. There are a lot of things named after Parley P. Pratt here, Parley's Canyon, Parley's Summit. Stillman Pond came across also. He's my third great-grandfather. From winter quarters to Salt Lake, he lost all eight of his children and his wife. I can't imagine what he went through on the way here. Sarah Elizabeth Ashworth Sears. She's a doctor, and I didn't know that. Her mother was a child labor worker in England. So Sarah's our first born in America. She settles in San Pete. These are pioneers that stood up for what they believed. They cared about things that money cannot buy. They didn't just search out to grab land. They never could have imagined the valley here as we see it today. They just give such great inspiration to me. They never gave up. If you just hang on and work a little harder, it's incredible what you can do. That's what my pioneer heritage means to me. They had a fortitude that drove them so deeply to come from another country to this land to live the religion that they had embraced. They were brave. If you have a Utah pioneer ancestor, we'd love for you to share your family story with us. Scan the QR code on your screen to go to fox13now.com and join the conversation. As was pointed out, many people who went on that journey with the Vanguard Company died along the way. In fact, through the years of hardship, 660 children lost their lives. But their lives are remembered even to this day. Fox 13 News reporter Spencer Joseph shows us how. 
Hundreds of names adorn the walls behind me here at the Pioneer Children's Memorial at This Is The Place. We spoke with some of those who have relatives on these walls and they shared their stories and what it means for those names to be here. There were thousands of people who crossed the plains from back east to come out here to settle in Utah. And of course that included families with children. It's a peaceful reminder of those that came before. A memorial that's been worked on and created over the last few years remembers the children lost as a part of the journey of pioneers to Utah. To honor the little children that were lost along the trail. Tricia Kramer is one of those who helped design the Pioneer Children's Memorial. Reading many of the journals of the young children and what they faced. Many of those children were buried just at the side of the trail with no real marker or anything to locate where they were. And so this became a project where we could memorialize them here. We have more than 650 names engraved upon these stones for the children, and we're still finding new names. Brian Westover also knows a lot about those early pioneers. But here, there's a name that he feels a connection to. Boda Mortensen is someone who I am related to that family. And she was a young girl who came at 10 years old from Denmark and they were exposed to really bad weather and freezing conditions and she went out one night to gather firewood and never returned and they found her the next morning. I have three daughters myself and thinking of just myself, I would, th I would think I would never have made it, but if I had my wife and my girls, I can't do that. I've got to try to keep going. Bodil Mortensen's story is now cast in metal as one of the many statues at the memorial. Probably would never imagine that someday there'd be a statue somewhere commemorating her. Other statues depict historical moments as pioneers with children cross the plains. I would put my arms around Tom's neck and cry bitter tears. With passages from journals of those children who perished. Tom was my favorite and best. And, most and they important. remind us really how precious life is. While Tricia Kramer originally felt this was just a passion project, she surprisingly found out after it was complete that she too was related to one of those names. And her name's Medi Marie Jensen, age four. She was one of those that perished on the strenuous journey. So as people continue to visit, many in Utah can trace their histories to these walls. And it's a way for those to remember 175 years later. Thinking about the bravery of these parents and really the faith that drove them forward to leave them behind, that's really compelling. And I hope that she would feel like we're doing enough to make her sacrifice worth it. Spencer, thank you. We have a lot to get to this half hour. That's right, coming up after years of planning, history has been made this week honoring Latter-day Saint pioneers not previously recognized. We'll show you how settlers of color are being honored. Plus, taking a trip back in time, Fox 13 News takes you on a tour of the Pioneer Memorial Museum for an in-depth look at some of the most treasured artifacts inside. Welcome back to this Fox 13 News special report celebrating 175 years of Utah's pioneer spirit. Exploring and celebrating Utah's pioneer heritage is made a little easier by how many artifacts are still intact and accessible today. The Pioneer Memorial Museum in Salt Lake City houses thousands of items owned by the first Utah settlers. It is the largest collection of Utah pioneer artifacts in the world and it's right across the street from the Utah State Capitol. Perhaps the most important of the artifacts in the Pioneer Museum is the wagon Brigham Young used during the initial trek to Utah in 1847. Young had become the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and his wagon served as the council house and general headquarters of the Pioneer Company during the journey west. He built two homes for his families, at first, the Beehive House and the Lion House, every single night they gathered together for prayer. And this is the prayer bell that he used to ring so that all the children and the adults, the moms, everyone else would come to prayer every single night. 
Brigham Young wanted to have an eagle gate at the opening of City Creek Canyon. It was a symbol to him. He really admired the eagle. It was carved from five blocks of wood. This is the original one from Eagle Gate, and the eagle that is out there now is an exact replica of this. Some of the collections at the museum are pioneer originals. Some of the pioneers were highly trained artisans. There were four brothers from England with the last name of Erdley, and they started a pottery crockery business in Salt Lake. The pioneers used pottery a lot for food preparation and food serving. These are beautiful pots that were made and fashioned from the clay and from the kilns that were built right here in the valley. Past Pioneer Day celebrations have generated their own historic and valuable memorabilia. Constance Huntsman. In 1897, it had been 50 years since the Vanguard Company came into the Salt Lake Valley. They contacted the Tiffany Jewelry Company in New York City and they commissioned these pins to be made. In the center, there's a picture of Brigham Young. There are bees that are surrounding the outside. They were given to the pioneers who were still alive at that time. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but many of these artifacts show how the pioneers and life in Utah today are not all that different. I think they felt that they were regular people finding a place to live and raising their families just like we do, just doing the best job that they could with what they had. They built the churches, they made it for us, and so we remember them and are grateful for what they did for us. And it's part of history. And the more we remember about history, the better we are. And I always like to say, the more we think about them, the more they think about us. While artifacts can give you an idea of how the pioneers lived, some items can affect you in a more personal way. Eight-year-old Will McKay shares the history of an artifact with which he feels a personal connection. John Ralm Oil was a guy who worked on the temple. He was called to be a stonemason. In fact, John Moyle was a well-known master stonemason who immigrated by handcart and settled in what became Alpine, Utah. He woke up in two, at two in the, in the morning to walk all the way up to the temple 20 miles. Every Monday morning, Moyle made the trek to fulfill his calling. But then an accident changed his life forever. So one day, when he was walking back from the temple of working on it, he got kicked by his cows and he broke his leg so severely that he had to get amputated and he carved himself a wooden leg. His painful injury took time to heal, but Moyle gradually was able to walk further and further on his homemade prosthetic and back to work he went. He started walking to the temple. He kept walking on it because he wasn't giving up. I'm guessing it probably hurt. A lot. Besides Moyle's inspiring perseverance, there's another reason Will is drawn to this story. I don't have a leg like he did, but the difference is I was on his right leg and I have it on my left leg. So you have two legs, you just can't move the other one. Will takes Moyle's story as a lesson to live by. It mostly tells me that it's like even if your leg's broken, you can fix it and stay alive, like don't give up. Even if your leg gets cut off, don't give up. History has recorded most of those families and people who settled here in those early years, but what has often been overlooked are the pioneers of color who made the trek. This week, a new monument was dedicated here at This Is The Place Heritage Park, honoring black Latter-day Saint pioneers who made their way to the Salt Lake Valley. Fox 13 News reporter Spencer Joseph takes us to the ceremony and shares stories of the pioneers of color. On the 175th anniversary of the advance party's arrival two days ahead of Brigham Young into the Salt Lake Valley, these statues behind me were dedicated here at This Is The Place. Those statues of Jane Manning James, Green Flake, Oscar Smith, and Hark Wells. All of them arriving at some point during 1847 and being venerated throughout their lives as some of the first pioneers. As a part of the ceremony, the man behind this, Molly Jr. Bonner, spoke. We tell the stories because they're true, because they endured it, and because we all have the opportunity to draw strength from them. Can we not draw strength from them? 
And while this memorial will stay standing for everyone to remember that history forever, there are those that still can trace their ancestry back to some of those early pioneers of color. We spoke with some of them who shared some incredible stories. The influence of the saints on the state of Utah, you can't miss it. These are people who were basically erased from public perception. As you look through the few pictures of early pioneers, while they are often forgotten, those faces of pioneers of color emerge with incredible stories. My great, great, great grandmother, uh, Elizabeth Xavier Tate, was from India. This is Cade Wilbur one of the many Utahns who can trace their heritage back to a pioneer of color. She met her husband, William, when he was a member of the East India Company and was a member of the church. And her family threatened to disown her and disinherit her if she joined the church, which she did and they did. Coming from India after giving birth to their child, she started her journey to rejoin her husband, William, in Utah. And uh, sailed from England with the Saints there to America, traveled by train to Iowa, and there the baby died. Heartbroken and determined to go on, she joined the Willie Handcart Company. History records they left late in the season and faced incredible hardship. She became stranded with the company without any other family. Uh, everyone told them not to, but uh, they came. Being from India, she had dark skin and wasn't treated very nicely by the, the people in the company, but she worked and, and pulled the handcart just as hard as everyone else did. You know, being of color and coming from that part of civilization, that's probably why she was treated poorly. But she wasn't alone as a trailblazer. These are people who are racially marginalized in the United States who are joining a suspect religious group, uh, so twice marginalized. Paul Reeve is one of the foremost authorities on pioneers of color, starting the Century of Black Mormon database, recording every one of those early pioneers that were black. Green Flake uh, was mentioned in newspaper accounts throughout the 19th century. Jane Manning James also commemorated throughout her life as an original 47 pioneer. So they received venerated positions. And while history has forgotten some of these faces, Cade Wilbur has not forgotten his ancestor. Despite the hardships she faced, Elizabeth Xavier Tate made it through. She just kept looking at all the writers for that red Irish hair. Uh, and once she saw him, she knew that everything was gonna be okay. I know that because she and they did hard things, I can do hard things. And if you ever think you can't, just go back and look at what your ancestors did. And their blood runs through your veins. So it's already there in your DNA. You can do anything. While we're celebrating the Latter-day Saint pioneers, they weren't the first to try to settle the mountain valleys of Utah. When we come back, we'll share the story of the Dominguez Escalante expedition nearly 250 years ago and why it fell short. But first, if you have memories of your favorite Pioneer Day celebrations, we want to see them. Scan the QR code on your screen right now and send us your pictures and video. We'll be right back. Fox 13, celebrating 175 years of Pioneer spirit. Sponsored by Lee's Marketplace, continues now. Welcome back. It's important to remember that Utah's first settlers' lifestyles were dramatically different from those of us here in the 21st century. They had interests common to people in this day, such as a love of music. And we want to share with you a story about one pioneer family's beloved piano and the measures they took during the journey west to make sure it came home with them one day. The Abraham O. Hunsaker family brought this across the plains in about 1862. When they got to the eastern part of Wyoming, some kind of problem occurred, a storm, and they had to stop. The Hunsakers dug a big hole and buried it by the side of the trail. The following year, Abraham and his sons came back and found it, unburied it, put it in their wagon, and brought it the rest of the way to the valley. While we are celebrating 175 years of the Utah pioneer spirit, 
It is worth pointing out that Brigham Young and his wagon train were not the first group to try to settle in what would become the Beehive State. It was in July of 1776, the same month and year our founding fathers declared independence from Britain, when a group led by two Franciscan friars, Father Silvestri Escalante and Francisco Dominguez, set out on a mission of their own. As you flip through the pages of history, you'd have to go further back, long before Brigham Young ever laid eyes on the Salt Lake Valley, to find another mission to Utah, often forgotten by time. Dominguez and Escalante were almost entirely breaking virgin ground. The end goal was to reinvigorate the weakened Spanish Empire and convert Native Americans to the Catholic faith. The journey, however, was treacherous. That was like being sent to Siberia. And so, and, and they, they weren't making any money. They were constantly plagued with Indian conflicts. The Dominguez Escalante expedition left New Mexico on July 29, 1776, to establish a route between Santa Fe and Monterey, California. It took more than a month for this group to pass through Colorado and into Utah. This map, drawn by Don Bernardo de Meyera, who came along on the expedition, gives insight into what they saw. So those are the bearded Indians that they encountered. They talk about them in the diary, and then Meyera was th thought they were so remarkable that he even painted them onto his map. The bearded Indians they encountered in central Utah were among the Ute tribe. On September 23rd, Fathers Dominguez and Escalante met with a group of Native Americans at Utah Lake and preached to them for three days. They promised after they made it to California, they would come back and establish a mission at the lake. But that never happened. It would have been right around in here somewhere and then uh, decided, what? okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to go on or are we going to go back? And they decided, I think fortunately, to go back. So while they failed to establish a route between Santa Fe and Monterey and converting Native Americans, their pioneer spirit on this journey is still something to admire all these years later. They suffered a lot on that trip and uh, uh, persevered. Uh, there was internal conflict in the party and they were ill and uh, half starved to death and took some real risk with the terrain that they were covering, but uh, they came through. Our celebration of the pioneer spirit continues in just a minute. Next up, we'll show you how the pioneer spirit is alive and well in some brand new Utahns today. But for so much of our state has changed in the past 175 years, here's a look at some prominent Utah locations from back then to how they look now. Thank you so much for joining us for this Fox 13 News special presentation celebrating Utah's pioneer spirit. While it has been 175 years since Brigham Young led settlers to the Beehive State, there have been many more people who have followed in the pioneers' footsteps in search of a better life here in Utah. And as we continue to celebrate this day, it's that pioneer spirit that nearly two decades later continues on in those finding their way to Utah. What is a pioneer? Is it someone who we remember from history, or are there pioneers all around us pushing us into the future? The exact definition of a pioneer is a person who is among the first to explore or settle a new country or area. And even though they might not be the first who come to your mind, the over 60,000 refugees that are currently in Utah fit that definition perfectly. My name is Atem. My name is Halima. My name is Abdul Bariale. These three are like many others from different countries and different backgrounds. My history when I came here, I came with nothing. And we left our country because of war. And, and we found great things here. But pioneers in their own right, all the same. I think we have a lot in common with the pioneers who came before us. They were looking for a new place and they, they start a new life. That's the same thing as we came as refugees. 
And there is another who agrees. Governor Spencer Cox also sees them as pioneers. Well, a, a pioneer by definition is someone who is the first to go into a place. And, and I think that the refugees are a great example of, of a modern day pioneer. They had to leave very quickly and, and had to abandon everything that they had. That reminds me very much of my great, great, great grandparents. But Atem, Abdul, and Halima are unique. They've devoted their lives in Utah to giving back to new refugees and pioneers. Utah has given us a lot of opportunities. A place that has always welcomed people who escaped persecution and violence. Giving them hope. Especially after the center was created. It's uh, like a second home. Making sure Utah's pioneer spirit will never fade into the next 175 years. I hope that we will still lead the nation in volunteerism, that we will still lead the nation in charitable giving, that we will have made it another 175 years because we were able to come together and solve the biggest issues. And then the coming generation of these refugees will undoubtedly become great leaders. Because they see them like their sisters and brothers, they, they came for the same cause. I look at the Pioneer Day like the World Refugee Day. Uh, it's, it symbolizes the same thing. I think those are our lessons of humanity that we all need to relearn and pass on to every generation because the lessons we can learn from them will help us get to the, uh, the next 175 years. We hope you've grown a greater appreciation of the rich history within our state and the best part is that it's never too late to learn about our forefathers. In fact, if you want to share stories about your ancestors from the early days of Utah's history, we'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us by scanning the QR code on your screen right now, and it'll take you to a special page on fox13now.com where you can share your favorite family pictures and memories. For all of us here at Fox 13 News, I'm Bob Evans. And I'm Dan Evans. Good night.